Hey guys, I'm back. Thank you for tuning in. It's been a little while since I posted a video, so I wanted to check in today and show you guys a cool little propagation experiment that I have going on. So uh, this is gonna be a very short video. Like I said, I have a proper update coming soon, uh, but I was excited to show you guys what I'm up to. So let's check it out. I wanted to say first real quick that I hope you are all doing well and taking care of yourselves and all that but let's go ahead and check out some orchids. You may remember in my last video, I talked a bit about my phias or gastrophias. This one is called Lady Ramona Harris, and it's this really cool terrestrial type orchid. And while I was doing research for that video about phias orchids, I learned that there is a cool way to propagate these guys. It's actually a type of stem propagation, which is used for several different types of orchids. Um, I don't know a ton about stem propagation in general. The reason that it's kind of noteworthy with Phias orchids is that they do it kind of readily, like it's not that difficult. Um, some orchids, you can kind of do cultures and stuff using stems, but um, Phias orchids just um, do it pretty quickly and naturally uh, where you don't need a very complex setup to do it. I think if you were to try to do stem propagations of certain other types of orchids that don't take as well to it, you would probably need um, different um, sort of settings for it and stuff. The cool thing about Phias orchids is that they do it pretty easily from what I've read. I've never done anything like this before. This is my first Phias orchid, but I'm really excited to get into um, breeding and hybridizing in general. I would like to start um, growing from seed and things like that, so I thought this might be a cool little experiment to get myself started on orchid propagation. It's really pretty simple. All I did was wait until this was nearing the end of its blooming, and you cut off the stem. So I cut it, of course, below where the first flower is. Um, and down below the first kind of segment that I could find. Um, you want to include as many of those kind of like nodes in there as possible when you cut it off. And I had guessed that although it's probably fine to, you know, enjoy the flowers as long as you can, it's probably best to remove the stem while it's still fairly young and healthy. So I didn't wait for the flowers to completely fade. I waited until a couple of them had started to drop and I cut it off while some of the flowers were still fresh. And over here, I just have one of these plastic tubs and I already had this on hand with these holes drilled in it because sometimes I'll use them to put my reptiles in while I'm cleaning their cages and things like that. So it actually worked out pretty well. This is kind of a perfect setup. I think if you weren't to put holes in the top, um, it would potentially cause more problems with getting rot and things like that and fungus because you do have to keep it kind of damp. So um, I think the holes in the lid are kind of important, but if you didn't have a container that you could put holes in the lid for, um, you could probably just try to keep the lid off of it most of the time. Even with the holes in the lid, like I have, I still uh, take the lid off for a couple hours a day to try to give it a bit of drying time. The instructions kind of say to use sphagnum moss for the whole thing, which makes sense. I just didn't have enough sphagnum to fill this entire tub. Um, I had bark though, and you know, I feel like it kind of doesn't make a difference as long as it's some type of substrate that'll retain some level of moisture. Um, they did say pretty explicitly though to um, cover the ends with moss so that it doesn't dry out too fast from the ends. They can still um, maybe take in a bit of water, although the ends will kind of seal and callus themselves. This just uh, keeps it kind of um, healthier longer. And I just keep it pretty moist. I spray it in the morning. Um, keep it covered maybe half the day and un uncovered the other half. Uh, I put the lid on it overnight so it doesn't dry out too fast. And I keep it in indirect light. It's near a window, but not under um, direct light. And if we are successful at each um, kind of node here, as you know, like orchidaceous plants have 
these like segmented um, sections on the inflorescence. So each one of those, um, I don't know if, that, if you call it a bract um, in these sections. I actually pulled part of like the leaf off. There's like a bit of a, a leaf, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, it's, it's like that there. I tried to remove a bit of it because that's where the sprout will come up and sometimes it can get kind of caught in there. I don't know if I'm really supposed to do that. A couple of the things I read said that people usually do that if they're doing this type of propagation with Fias orchids. And it's been a couple weeks, maybe two weeks. And I think uh, most of the things I read said that between, you know, three and four weeks is when you might start to see some progress. So I'm not sure if it'll work. This is my first time trying something like this. So I just thought it would be a fun little experiment to try. And I was thinking that if this is successful and depending on how many little plants I get, I was thinking it might be fun to do like a little giveaway for my subscribers. Um, they're gonna be small, they probably won't cost me much to ship, so I wouldn't mind doing that. I thought that might be kind of fun. Uh, maybe you guys can have a couple of plants uh, from my mother plant here and we can kind of grow them together. So um, that's gonna be a little while from now, obviously. I have to wait and see if they're even successful and then I want them to grow enough where they're healthy enough to transport and all that. But um, yeah, I thought that might be fun. So I know this was kind of a short, uh, not very exciting video, but I wanted to jump on here and say hi to you guys and show you guys a couple flowers. I set up a little display here just so you had something nice to look at. Um, nice little Cattleya, that's a, a Calatonia Beverly's Blush. Um, there's my Fao Tzu Chiang Balm, a nice uh, No ID Fowl with a billion flowers on it, um, uh, Dendrobium Second Love, and uh, Miltoniopsis Burtsfield Eileen there. So a couple flowers for you to look at too, but thank you so much for watching. I hope uh, this video was somewhat enjoyable for you guys. And I'll be back soon with a proper orchid collection update because I have some other stuff I can't wait to show you guys. So thank you so much for tuning in and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.